This video is about fence post errors. It's discussed in section 20.2 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. Now, we use uh, fence post errors when we're talking about trying to determine the period or frequency of a signal. So let's say we have a signal that looks like this, and we want to say what its period is. Well, we can look at some feature of the signal, like here I'm looking at the peak, and measure how much time there is for one period. Or I could look at two periods and take that time divided by two to get the period. Now notice that in order to do two periods, I have to have three events. And this off by one error is a very common thing to see when students are trying to estimate period. Because they will say, oh, I've got five events here. So they'll take the total time and divide by five. But if you have five events, the time from the first one to the last one is only four periods. And the reason this is called a fence post error is if you think about building a fence. So you've got a chain link fence here with posts. If you want to build 40 feet of fence with a post every 10 feet, you don't need four posts. You need five posts because you need one on each end. And so you end up with one more fence post than the length of fence divided by uh, the distance between posts. So you have to watch out for this when we're doing things like um, the pulse rate taken from, well, we do this for uh, blood pressure. We do this for the optical pulse monitor. We do this for the EKG. Because pulse rates are not exactly fixed periods, the, the oscillator that's in your heart is um, not perfectly periodic, uh, what people usually do is to take a number of periods five or ten periods is good, take a precise measurement of the time of those five to ten periods, and divide by the number of periods to get the um, time per period. Though usually people want to talk about pulse rate in beats per minute, so if instead of doing that you take the ten periods divided by the time it takes for the 10 periods, then you would have periods or beats per second multiplied by 60 to get beats per minute. So you have um, n periods divided by time for n periods. That will give you frequency in periods per time unit. And like I say, for heart rate, we usually want to use minutes as the time one, but our measurements are usually in seconds. So you take periods per second, multiple by second, by 60 seconds per minute to get periods per minute. Let's take a look at an example of that. So I'm going to do a new plot here. And what I'm going to do is to plot some data. This is from a pulse monitor, but it could just as easily have been uh, from the uh, band past blood pressure measurements, or it could be from an EKG. Now, when, we, when that comes up, you can see it looks like a mess. And that's because the uh, sampling rate here was 30 times a second, so it's hard to see which points go with which points. A scatter diagram is not really what we want here. We have a continuous curve here. We'd like to plot it as a continuous curve. And we can either do um, set style data lines, or we can just say with lines here. And now we can see quite clearly what uh, the pulse looked like. 
And what I want to do is to take a chunk of events here and count them. Uh, so let's uh, zoom in just a little bit on this. That I can count more easily. Now this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven events. So that's ten periods. This first one, I could try to read it off of here, but actually it's easier in some cases to go back to the original data file and look for here would be the minimum. And uh, that one was at 1.16666 seconds. Um, and the 11th one here is right at 14 seconds. So I can say I've got um, 10 periods at my calculator, and then I've got the uh, 14 minus uh, 1.6s, sorry, 1.1 1. Uh, 1 and a bunch of sixes. Let's get the number here right. All right, and if I do, that's uh, 12.8333 uh, seconds. I take the 10 periods. Remember, there were 11 events, so that's 10 periods. Um, divide by that, and I get 0.779 beats per second. If I multiply by that, that by 60, I get 46.75 beats per minute. So the crucial thing for this video is that when you're counting the events, you want to have an integer number of periods and you need one more event than you have periods. Um, and do count an integer number of periods. Don't try and say, oh, I've got about 15 seconds here and I've got about 11 events in 15 seconds. You get terrible estimates that way. So rather than picking a fixed time period and trying to count events in it, Pick a fixed number of events and time from the first one to the last one. Measuring time is something that uh, things like our microcontrollers do quite well. And so measuring that time interval and then dividing, again, computers and calculators are pretty, quite good at doing division. So there's no need to do approximations here. Measure the time fairly precisely. That's really about all I needed to tell you about fence post errors.